In this video, we're going to explore why we're using App Inventor in our beginning Android course. First, I want you to think, what are some things that you need to build an app? So if you have a great idea for an app, what do you need? Well, traditionally, we've thought you need to be a programmer or you need some programming fundamentals. Um, you, you, in this course, we assume that you don't have any of that. We assume that you're starting uh, with uh, an excellent background and experience in whatever your uh, major is or your field of study is. And that might not be programming and probably isn't. As a matter of fact, if it's not programming, you probably have a lot of great ideas that others might not have. Uh, so we're going to need some kind of programming fundamentals, but in this class, that'll be fairly lightweight. After that, we're going to need something called an integrated development environment. An integrated development environment allows us to write our application, and that is basically write the instructions in a manner that we understand that says, this is what my application does. After we've written the app, or while we're writing it, we might do this continuously, we're going to compile our application. That translates our applications from words or instructions that we would understand into machine language that our hardware will understand, our laptop or PC or Mac, whatever we're running it on. The compiler translates from what we understand to uh, what the computer will understand. Next, we need to package the application for delivery. In Android, that's going to be an APK format. Uh, a lot of times we will make an APK that we can deploy on the Google Play Store and then other people can download our application. And that's certainly something that we can do in this class. We also can create an APK and then create a link to download that APK and then create a QR code that will reach that link. That's also another way a lot of times we'll, uh, we'll make this happen. Next, we need to test and run our application to make sure it does what we want. So there are a lot of IDEs, IDEs available, Integrated Development Environment. Visual Studio is common for Windows-based programs and for the Windows suite of programming languages like C Sharp and Visual Basic. Xcode, that's what our friends over in the iOS environment use to write apps. Uh, and then in the land of Java, Eclipse is probably one of the most common. It's one of those IDEs that Pretty much everybody uses as a baseline. A lot of people use it as their IDE of choice. Then we have Android Studio, which is based on another very common uh, Eclipse IDE, I'm sorry, Java IDE called IntelliJ. So I have Android Studio here. This is a typical view of what an IDE is going to look like. We have our project structure on the left, and then we have the instructions that we've written or the code that we've written on the right. Now, this makes perfect sense to me, honestly, but if you've never programmed before, does all of this make sense? Would you understand what it's doing right off the bat? Probably not. So there's a bit of a learning curve involved here in understanding how to create an Android app in a traditional IDE that looks like this. Our next option is App Inventor. Uh, now, App Inventor is what we're going to use at the start of the semester. And one major benefit is that it is browser-based. So there's nothing crazy to install. You can install an emulator, and I have a video that walks through installing that emulator, uh, but beyond that, everything is in the browser. And the other big advantage of using App Inventor is that we don't have to deal with a window like this that has all this code written out, and all these curlies, and all these symbols. And boy, let me tell you, if you miss a symbol, that messes everything up and your program won't compile anymore. So uh, we don't really have to worry about things like that with App Inventor because everything's visual. Now, if we take a look at this, you can read, uh, okay, new URL, string format, HTTP connection, uh, add request property. You can read this. These are words, but it might not necessarily make sense. Now, let's take a look at App Inventor, and let's see what we have going on in the little brown block here. When button one click, add items to list, and these are the items we want to add, call a notifier, show an alert, change the background color of the screen to green, and change the text in the text box to empty text. So these are fairly complicated instructions, 
but you see everything kind of fits together like this puzzle and it's fairly readable maybe maybe not readable if this is the first time you've seen it but it won't take long before you get the hang of what's going on here so it's honestly quite nice so you see we're writing our program right here in the browser which is one of the things that our ide does we write the program okay can we compile package test and run uh, we certainly can we can run it by going to connect and then choosing emulator and again i'll have videos that show how to do that and this will bring up an emulator let me run back here to designer view so you can see what it looks like on the designer there we go here's here's a little canvas where we can design a screen and you'll see oh just a minute you'll see how that canvas looks when it's presented on an emulator very similar uh, just a little bit of reconfiguration uh, for the smaller resolution that we have here but very similar nonetheless so why uh, I'm sorry one other thing I wanted to show was uh, how to how to actually package if I go to build APK you see that's going to compile our program and that's going to create this APK and the APK is what we put out on the Google Play Store so all of these things we can do with our traditional IDE we can do with App Inventor now um, we 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 like it because it's quick it's browser based it's intuitive drag and drop short learning curve and no programming experience required now does that mean that we're going to use app inventor all the time or that it's a tool that we'll use for building a heavy duty app maybe so maybe not there's still definitely a very big role for a traditional ide like android studio if you're an experienced programmer you'll find that android studio makes a lot of sense you also have very tight control of the program. You can add things like third-party libraries that maybe uh, don't come prepackaged with App Inventor. And this is with Android Studio I'm talking about. You can get into more details of threading. Uh, so there are certain things where you do want to go under the covers and you do want to use a traditional IDE. But for our class, uh, assuming no programming experience, App Inventor makes a lot of sense. Now, as soon as your friends and your uncles and your aunts find out that you are in a mobile app development class, they're going to tell you, guess what? I have an idea for an app. I hear this all the time when I tell people what I do for a living. A lot of people have ideas for apps. And honestly, it, if you're a programmer, it's kind of a barrier to entry. It's kind of like not everybody can program. So people will come to a programmer and say, hey, will you partner with me? I want to put this app together. I'm kind of looking for someone to help me out. Um, okay. Honestly, when I hear that, I often think, well, you probably want me to work for free if you say partner with me. But nonetheless, okay. So uh, a lot of times that people come to me with these ideas, it's a matter of, well, God, I don't know if I'd really have the time to give it to, you know, do what you want. I might not be the best person for you. It would be nice if we could take the tools to create an app and just give it to the people who have the idea to create an app. Um, that way they can express themselves in an intuitive format. And that's where something like App Inventor comes in handy. You don't need to be a full on programmer, but you can still build a very functional program in a short amount, amount of time. So uh, democratization of technology, make it available to everybody. Um, make it available to people who have ideas so that they don't have to seek out a programmer who might not have time to spend on uh, writing an app. Uh, we also have the, the consideration of the maker movement, the things like the, uh, uh, you know, build your own robot and things like that. Uh, draw a circuit board on a piece of paper and uh, it works. So this kind of falls along with the maker movement of, as well. One really good example we have of all of this comes in chapter four of our text. Uh, the text that's available online and this is an app that was written called no texting while driving and the idea is simple enough basically if you receive a text message while you're driving it just responds back and says sorry can't respond right now i'm driving it's a functional application and it was one that was written by somebody who was an english major and had no previous programming experience so you see here we are with uh, app inventor and what the App Inventor user interface looks like. And we see that there is a screen that has, uh, you know, some, some text on it, a message to send, a response to send automatically. Now, we scroll down a bit, 
and auto responding to a text, we see another one of these kind of programming cutouts. Now again, maybe you haven't seen this before, maybe this is your first exposure, but we can get a pretty good idea of what's going on here. When I have received a text message, uh, take the number, okay, set the phone number to the number that sent the message. Now we're going to create a message and we're going to send it back to that phone number. And the message we're going to send is the response label text. In other words, what is the text here? What's the text here in this text box or the default text up here? I'm driving right now. I'll contact you shortly. What's the text that we want to put in if somebody sends a text message? So we go back down. Okay, get that text. Okay, and then simply send the message. Fairly intuitive. And you see that all of these puzzle pieces fit together, which is important. If you're trying to get uh, an application to work and it looks like the puzzle pieces aren't fitting together, and by puzzle piece, literally, I mean that little tongue and groove that we have there, and also the, uh, the little uh, tabs that are coming off here that fit right into the dimple below. So uh, if those pieces don't match up, maybe you don't have the right pieces, maybe you need to uh, switch the pieces around. Those are things that we're going to explore this semester. So all very good stuff and I'm looking forward to doing it. Um, I wrote a, a, a quick demo program for our class in just a few minutes, deployed it on the emulator, it worked great. Uh, I was actually able to use the browser-based IDE to a limited degree on my mobile phone uh, when I was shopping with my wife earlier today, uh, I was able to just fiddle with it a little bit on my mobile phone and kind of get the hang of it. Made a lot of sense. And because it signed in with my universal Gmail address, uh, you know, it synchronizes. It, was, it knows who I am when I'm on my phone versus when I'm on my laptop as well. So lots of exciting things to talk about this semester, and I'm looking forward to going through them with you. Thank you.